Hi, welcome to May in my series of extreme productivity experiments. This one was pretty extreme and it was the first one where the, uh, the intention of, of what I was experimenting with was negative. So I was playing around with the idea of negative. So May was mania and the idea was to ditch everything that I currently have set up around my own productivity. So I, I uh, had my toodle do account uh, I was locked out of it basically, I had my password changed by someone else in the office so I had no access to any of my lists, uh, I stopped using my weekly checklist and my daily checklist, I didn't keep my inbox at zero. I basically practiced um, exactly the opposite of what Think Productive preaches and goes around uh, talking to businesses about which is, you know, obviously all the stuff that's in my book How to Be Productivity Ninja, keep your inbox at zero, have a good list of projects, have a master actions list, all that stuff. I did none of it and I just lived the month by the seat of my pants basically and just just uh, you know like just it was about just me seeing what happened and just going with the flow and just being really uh, reactive to to what I found along the way um, so I tried to like there's always this temptation to write stuff down there's always this temptation to write lists and write things in the, in the day so I tried to avoid anything that resembled a to-do list so if I, was in, if I was in a meeting I would still take notes but like I tried to avoid you know, doing a daily to-do list in the morning or, you know, writing things down that were going to be part of a list later on and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, the whole month was just basically really stressful. So the idea of all of these extreme productivity experiments is to take myself to a place that is extreme. It's not what I'd advise anybody to do ever. It's certainly not what I want to do ever again. Uh, but just to learn from those particular situations. And a few things really stood out. Um, the first thing to say, the real headline, no surprises here, is that it really vindicated a lot of the stuff that I talk about in How to Be a Productivity Ninja, a lot of the stuff that we go out and, and talk to organizations about, it's all true. Like once you start to see the other side of it, you start to see, you know, really it was about me putting myself back in the position um, that a lot of delegates who come on our workshops are facing. They don't have those structures, they don't have um, those natural habits around the way that they work and they're looking to us to, to help them with that. So I was putting myself almost in their shoes and just saying, okay, let's just go with the flow and just work chaotically and see what happens. So having no systems, a few observations. Um, yeah, on top of the fact that it really did prove that what we do really works, which is like, okay, phew, I don't need to, don't need to close down my business or anything, this is fine. A um, couple of things that I thought were really interesting. The first was my natural uh, inclination and magpie-like focus looking for um, the purposefully pointless. So the purposefully pointless. Those things that feel like they're full of purpose and actually they're totally pointless. So looking at the property pages in the free newspaper that you get uh, when you're not even looking to move house but you just curiously look at all this stuff. Reading those free newspapers at all. Checking the internet. Checking for new Facebook notifications. Checking, checking, checking for new email. As soon as you have this sense of not having control of what you're working on. As soon as you don't have a good sense of the best place to be putting your time then you just look for, you know, knowing that you don't really have the answer, you just look for something that feels like work. You look for something that kind of feels like it's gonna be useful. And most of that stuff is completely and utterly pointless and useless. So this, I just coined this phrase, the purposefully pointless, and it really started to sum up a lot of the things that I was attracted to during that month. Because you're just looking for distraction. You just have this gnawing sense of not being in control of stuff. And it's like, give me something that just stops me thinking about that. And give me something that just allows me to to put off that decision making for a little while longer. So the purpose would be pointless. Um, I also found that there's this relationship between productivity and stress, which is probably much closer than I thought before. And what it's led me to think is that like um, anything that you do, uh, anything that you're working on uh, to improve productivity is probably at the same time, if you rebadge that and said, anything that you're working on is to reduce stress. Those two things are basically the same. Like if you really start to think about it, you know, writing a list to get those, those things out of your head, you know, creating structures, creating certainty, looking for clarity and control, all those things are about on some level reducing stress and not feeling, you know, just not feeling anxious about the decisions that you're making. So starting to notice that um, was really important. And, and I think um, the other thing that I, I really realized that month was just this idea of if you're not working on your stress in some way, if you're not working on how to reduce stress, your stress is like working away at you. You know, so the, the longer that month went on, the more I just felt totally 
out of control, the more stressed I got. Um, it really started to have a knock-on bleed effect into the rest of the Think Productive team. People were just looking at me like, what are you doing? Like, please stop this. This is like not healthy. Uh, and it really felt, you know, for me, it just felt like a very challenging month. I, I suppose the first couple of weeks of it probably felt a little bit like ignorance is bliss. You know, looking back on it, for the first couple of weeks, knowing that I didn't have structures and didn't need to have structures was a little bit of a relief, if I'm honest. Um, and then towards the end of the month, it was totally the reverse. It was like, give me that stuff back now. Um, and the other reflection, I think, was that there were certain things in in what I talk about in the book and what we talk about in Think Productive. So we talk about the idea of a weekly checklist. So a weekly time when you're actually going through all of your projects and really looking at the overview macro level of, of what you're doing. Um, and then a daily checklist where you're doing that on a micro level, so just looking at the tasks that you're gonna do for the day, for the week. I just didn't miss those checklists at all, particularly the weekly one I was really surprised by. I thought for me that often feels like a very important, you know, sort of grounding milestone in my week sort of thing. And I just didn't miss it at all. Like I really, you know, I was quite surprised by that. And likewise, um, the good ideas park. So parking those good ideas, those, those potential future crazy and creative projects to just get them off your actual to-do list and have them parked somewhere else. So those were two things that I didn't crave, I didn't miss. And I think what that, what tell, what that really tells me is that like, I think um, a lot of those uh, working on structure, which again is about working, working on structure is about working on uh, incre increasing productivity and it's also about working on reducing your stress. Um, that, it is work, you know, that stuff is difficult to do. A lot of people just don't really enjoy it. And I think um, perhaps we can get sometimes a little bit too tyrannical um, and I think Think Productive is, it, it, we're certainly guilty of this as we, t you know, we tell everybody, oh, it just becomes like a really easy habit to do, like uh, to do your, your regular weekly checklist and all this sort of stuff. Um, I think, you know, I, I really enjoy the feeling I have at the end of doing my weekly checklist where I'm like, okay, I just totally feel in control. I feel like I know what I'm doing. But I really don't enjoy the start of a weekly checklist because it's the first bit and I know that I'm, you know, I'm going to be sat here for a good couple of hours and, you know, it's going to be a, a load of hard thinking and, I feel like there's so many things to make sense of and it's difficult stuff and so I think recognizing that there's real hard work involved in not feeling stressed at work there's real hard work that you have to put in in order to then be really productive the rest of that week and um, so the week the weekly checklist for me it's a couple of hours that review period there like it's it's a very efficient way of working it's a very um, you know it, like it, like it's a very productive way of working it's, it's a very healthy way of working but it's you know it's tough like it's not the easiest thing to do in your week at all and it's the kind of thing that if you just if you're liberated from having the commitment to yourself to do that it's like oh this is quite nice that I don't have to think about it and I don't have to think on that level um, but in many ways you know ignorance is bliss so um, once you start to realize the downside of that you realize the importance of of really putting that effort in in order to be productive and also to reduce your stress so those were some just some, some thoughts from my mania experiment. Um, on all these videos, I'm trying to also do just a little update to 2015, which is where we're sat now. Uh, what am I using from that month? What have I learned from that month? I'm using nothing from the month of mania. I never want to go there again. It was tough. Um, you know, particularly those last couple of weeks, I just felt so stressed out. Um, and, you know, I started this whole uh, extreme productivity experiment series with like health warning to everybody else, the readers and the listeners and stuff out there saying, you know, don't try this at home. I'm doing the extreme stuff so that you don't have to. And also so that I don't have to do it regularly. So doing it for that one month means I never have to do it again. And I'm very, very pleased about that. I don't ever want to be in that um, unstructured and unfocused kind of situation again. It was uh, it was pretty horrific. So nothing, I've learned nothing from, uh, from, from that that I'm going to take forward into every month. But I learned absolutely loads um, that will just stay with me just as lessons and particularly the, just the general affirmation that um, the stuff that's in my book, the stuff that we're teaching businesses, it really helps, it really works. And for me, you know, that was my hypothesis for the month, definitely proved and very, very pleased about that.